Cheers from Japan, I'm the Tokyo Toy Bastard, and fuck Funko Pops. This video is going to be talking about vintage Dragon Ball soft vinyl toys, vintage Dragon Ball Sofabee toys, produced between 1986 until the early 90s. I do have some Funko Pops of Dragon Ball Z, they are vinyl, they're not vintage, and they're ugly as fuck, and I don't collect them. That was one that belongs to my kids, and they don't even like him anymore. It just happens to still be in my house. So let's get started. I'm gonna go back to 1986 mostly and then work my way up, up to the later uh, vintage releases of Sofabee. I will not be showing my entire collection of soft vinyl uh, Dragon Ball stuff. I've got some stuff that's from the early 2000s. I've also got a bunch of bootlegs and a bunch of like little minis that are like this big uh, that are, it would take like two hours to do a whole video of. So like figures like this, as much as I wanna talk about them, and I still kind of am because I brought them here. Figures this small, uh, I've got tons of these kinds of little things and I just don't have the time to talk about them and I don't think anyone wants to sit through an entire video of just that. So yeah, stuff like this, I love it, but I'm gonna be talking about, uh, by the way, these are also bootlegs. Um, I'm gonna be talking about the larger, mostly larger scale uh, soft vinyl toys. All right, so we're gonna start things off with one of the very first soft vinyl Dragon Ball toys ever produced. And that's this, Kid Goku, made by Epoch, Epic, E-P-O-C-H. Um, Epoch, Epoch did a bunch of different toys. Uh, they did Keshi, they did Sofabi, they did little play sets. I've also got a bunch of other little, like, little random toys they produced. Uh, but, um, yeah, like a lot of the early Dragon Ball stuff was produced by Epoch, uh, before Bandai started cranking out a lot of different things. So uh, all of these figures on the back of their head say like copyright, uh, Bird Studios, uh, Kira Toriyama, etc., etc. Uh, and uh, you'll notice that like um, the front is painted, and the back is not. And a lot of Safa be like this. These are sold in box sets. A lot of stuff like this was produced like this. But you've got Goku here. All right, I love this figure, and he he's even loose. He's he's fairly expensive. I'd love to find some box examples, but uh, I'm a broke person and I don't spend a lot of money. I like to buy I like to buy more things loose than I do like to spend a lot of money on something boxed. Up next, we've got his his pal Oolong, his communist pig pal Oolong, uh, with his awesome little attire here, and um, he's got the same markings on the back. Uh, of course, he doesn't have as much detail going on, so he's he's painted all the way around. Uh, so let's stick him there, and you'll notice they're the same scale there. And I think I already mentioned it, but yeah, these were produced around 1986. Let's see if we can get these guys to stand up together. All right. And um, also, while we're talking about our Dragon Ball friends, one of their shared universe friends in the same scale is Arale, Arale-chan. And this one is not in the best condition. It's a bit faded, and it's got some stains on it, but still really cool. Um, actually, this one's up for sale and I believe someone already wants to claim it. I'm looking for one that's in a bit, a bit better condition. I do have a bunch more of Arale soft vinyl stuff, uh, like like this bootleg here. And uh, one of our uh, one of my followers uh, requested more Arale in the video. So here's your Arale, Susie. Hello. Um, but I'll do a whole video uh, uh, about my Dr. Slump and Arale's collection because the last one I did was really long and it was shot on a webcam. So so we got Arale there hanging out with Oolong and Goku. And you can't have Arale without her creator slash father, Dr. Slump. Also known as Sinbei Norimaki. And uh, yeah, he <laughs> they've made him a bit more squat. I believe this is from the same series. I uh, could be wrong. Nope, nope. This one's Poppy. Sorry, he's actually not. If you can see right here, it says uh, Poppy marked right there. And a lot of people uh, will say that, yep, this one is also Poppy. Same scale, though. Poppy. And if you look at their feet, uh, nothing on their feet. So, yeah, Epic. Epic has no markings that say Epic, and Poppy has Poppy on the feet. All right, and then one more figure in this scale. Come on, Goku, stand up. Too long, help him out. Thank you. Oh, they're gonna die anyway. Well, it's okay. Is this beautiful and kind of fugly baby-faced Bulma? 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is from the same lineup. They also produced uh, Master Roshi and Yamcha in this line, uh, boxed with accessories. The only accessories I have left of Bulma are her shoes. I mean, I bought her like this, uh, but I still like it. I love this figure. I mean, it's like the details on like Goku, like, you know, he looks like Goku. You know, he's not the best sculpt, but that's kind of the charm of these old toys. Look at Raleigh, she looks like Raleigh, but Bulma. Yeah, she's kind of got some like kind of Gerber baby face going on. Well, anyway, that's uh, that's this little collection here. She's got the glove and the bracelet. She's cute. She's cute. So yeah, this little lot here is, is kind of pricey now. But um, I like these little figures here. All right, now we're going to change up scales a little bit. We'll just kind of stick these all in the back here. Up next, we've got uh, a different Bulma. And I honestly can't remember. I know this was not Epoch. And uh, the bottom of the feet don't say anything. And uh, I, 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 I'm... She does have the same Epoch markings, though, so maybe this was just a different set of Epoch things. Um, I think some people re uh, mistakenly refer to these as Poppy, but these are not. Neither of these are Poppy, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the markings match on both of these, so I'm fairly sure she's just a different line of Epoch. Uh, but right now I'm on my work break, and I really haven't re like gone back and looked at like any of the information. I'm just going by from what uh, going by what I remember. And, um, so yeah, let me know in the comments, uh, if I'm mistaken about the, uh, uh, the company that produced this. So pretty much after this, uh, everything else is going to be produced by either Utaka, Plex, or Bandai. So let's jump into, uh, so those are all, uh, around 86 era. And then, um, you got another one here. I think this. This is get, now we're going to get into early 90s territory. This is a similar scale to this Bulma. Uh, it's a little bit a little bit smaller. This is a Goku uh, soft final. And this one was produced in Korea. And I believe this one was uh, released. There was a box set. And it, there was a Super Saiyan version too. I used to have the bootleg of the, of the Super Saiyan. But I traded it. Um, and I believe these were, uh, if I'm not mistaken, a Yutaka box set. Uh, a lot of the stuff produced in Korea was by Yutaka. So, again, let me know if I'm mistaken about that. But, yeah, uh, fairly sure that's where this came from. So, yeah, there's that guy, that Goku. And, he, yeah, like I said, he came packaged with a Super Saiyan version of him. And then on a larger scale, uh, this has been uh, seen packaged as Yutaka and also as Plex. And... By the way, if you're not familiar with Plex, Plex uh, often gets confused with Poppy. Plex is, if you see a logo that has a P with a circle around it, that's Plex. Poppy uh, technically was actually uh, bought out by Bandai. So if you look at a Poppy figure, um, it will have... Uh, wait, what am I doing? I'm looking at that, Raleigh. Poppy will have the uh, stamp that says Poppy in Katakana on the bottom, like this. Generally, from, from my experience. All right, let's take a look at this Goku, no matter his uh, origin. Um, so, yeah, this came. they did bootlegs of this, too, in Korea. Uh, I, some of them are stamped, like, made in Korea, I think. But I've had a few different one of these. Um, they're different hues sometimes. Uh, there's a different variation on the sticker. And uh, one thing noticeable about this Goku, he's officially licensed. Um, yeah, he's got the information on the bottom. Is that, for some reason, they sculpted him like this little mini mullet which is interesting. <laughs> but they all they all have this. I mean, all the official ones have this on, on this particular figure. And unfortunately, mine has uh, been a little bit melted in the back, uh, maybe by sun or something. But I might be able to fix that with a hairdryer. I just had them on display and forgot about it. I've owned a few of these, and I've traded and sold them. So anyway, here's another one uh, to add, the, add to the pile here. Yeah, he's... Eh, eh. He's not quite this scale. Um... As far as I know, he's the only soft, soft final toy uh, in this scale from this little line here. All right, and up next, one more Goku before we switch up uh, into a completely different set of figure lines. Uh, it's this little soft final Goku. Uh, it's just a bust, and it's similar in scale to this. Um, I actually, I think this was also in a box set of some sort, but it's a suction cup. But it's it's a it's a soft final toy. It's cool. It's a cool little little toy that you can stick on the window or put in your display case. And I believe this is also early 90s. All right, not technically a minifigure. Um, actually, now that we're done talking about those kind of early, early figures, let's clear the space here. 
and let's get into uh, the 100% all uh, 1991 to like 1994 era. And we'll start things off uh, with Mr. Piccolo here. All right, so this is uh, Piccolo from the Super Collection. And Super Collection was a line of soft vinyl figures and boxes uh, that I'll make. Maybe I'll do a detailed review on at some point. Uh, produced by Bandai around 1991 or 1992. Here it says Bandai 1992. And it came in just these little easy... I have the boxes. They're just buried and I have to go back to work. So I'm not going to dig that out. If you want me to do a complete review of the uh, Super Collection figures, I can do that. Uh, currently, I only have Piccolo and all the Super Saiyans. So there's Piccolo. Let's put Piccolo in the back there. And uh, they actually made these nicely scaled to each other. Um, you've got Super Saiyan Son Gohan as a young teen. Uh, you've got Super Saiyan Future Trunks, which is one of my favorites of this line. I think he's actually the first figure I picked up in this line. And uh, he's got uh, his sword, which has a decal on it. Um, the de It has a decal here. I t I've taken it off. I like it better like this. And his sword comes out. Pretty cool. So notice right here that they're all scaled up, uh, appropriately. Uh, you've got Super Saiyan Vegeta. And you'll notice that they are painted on the back, unlike the uh, the earlier figures. So I guess Vegeta and Trunks are about the same size. So Trunks, uh, Vegeta's a little bit shorter. And then my favorite, I don't know, I kind of like, well, actually, I like both of these. I lied when I said my favorite earlier. I really like this one, the Super Saiyan Goku. I'm holding them diagonally so you can see because he's a bit tall. Um, there's also a Taiwanese bootleg of this that I don't own that looks really awesome that I really want. But yeah, he's got the torn pants and stuff. The standard version of Goku is is just your generic Goku. He's he's not too dissimilar from this one, but just on a different scale. But yeah, there is my uh, my collection of the Super Battle. Uh, sorry, Super Collection. Not to be confused with the Super Battle Collection, which is a completely different line of figures produced around the same time by Bandai. But they like to use a lot of the same lingo and wordage for their figure lines, even down to like their Keshi. It gets confusing. All right, so that's the Super Collection. Now, um, while I grab this other line here, let me talk about it real quick. So I said I wasn't really going to do any minifigures. Uh, this is the only exception uh, because these are actually kind of almost... Um, these are all like kind of three-inch scale uh, minifigures, and they were Gashapon figures. And they are miniature, but they're not like super deformed mini type figures like these are actually like legit little action figures that you could play with so I'm going to include them in here and uh, they are these little line this little Gashapon line um and to be honest and I'm sorry I also don't remember the name of this uh, specific Gashapon line there were so many different Gashapon lines and Keshi lines that it just my memory could only contain so much and I really didn't have time to look at anything and this video was overdue but um yeah, uh, I will post the name in the uh, description of this figure line if you're interested in them, uh, or just you know let me know if uh, if uh, if you know before I do before I go back and do that. Um, but they released uh, six figures in this line, and the first one that I have here is Super Saiyan Goku. Um, yeah, so they came uh, unassembled. So this, these are soft vinyl. They're really light, about three inches tall. They came unassembled, like with the uh, torsos and the arms uh, detached, and you had to assemble, assemble them yourself. And the Goku, in my experience, whenever it's anytime I find one, already always has this little this little part of his hair scratched. And I guess that's just for being in the capsule rolling around and stuff, or kids playing with it. But yeah, there's your Goku. Let's take him back here. Um, up next, you've got your Super Saiyan uh, Vegeta. And these all, yeah, you've noticed these have gold hair, and uh, I don't mind the gold hair on these. I really don't like the gold hair on the Super Battle Collection figures. I prefer the yellow hair. But on this little line, I like I like how they've done the gold hair. It's really shiny. And uh, yeah, Vegeta. He's got a bit of a black mark on his nose. And Super Saiyan Trunks. Super Saiyan Future Trunks with the Saiyan armor. And I think it's odd that they did the Saiyan armor versions of Vegeta and Trunks, but they didn't do Goku with the Saiyan armor. That would have been kind of cool. Uh, Yutaka did do a line of all of the uh, figures in action figure form with the Saiyan armor. But uh, but it's all right. Goku kind of stands out that way. And uh, I don't know if I showed the back. He's, he's got the ponytail and stuff. I like that one. Now, the other figures that they did... So this is based on the Cell games, of course. 
So they did two versions of Cell, not three, which is, you know, there's three main forms of Cell. And you'd, you'd ask yourself, well, why didn't they just do the other form of Cell? For some reason, they thought it was necessary that they do uh, base form trunks. And they didn't do base forms of any of the other Saiyans, so it doesn't make really much much sense, in my opinion. Uh, other than the fact that they wouldn't have to make a new body sculpt. Um, although they, they did have to at least merge this, because this is all one piece, the head and the body. Or the fact that Trunks uh, sells more. Especially at that time, he was he was all the rage with the teenage girls, and all the boys thought he was cool. So they stuck another Trunks in here with his uh, with his epic long hair. Okay, and then the Cell. See, in I wish they would have done Cell in his first form. I really love Cell in his first form, and they really didn't really do much with the vintage version of that. Um, so you've got him in his tail. He's pretty cool. So this is in his second form. Not as a larva form, but yeah, his second form as a humanoid. And it's a really nice little figure. And the cell figures are a bit more rare, rare to find. Um, I'm not really going to give any price points on these. If you are curious about how much uh, some of these figures go for, I will give some price points on the, the very last one I'm going to show because that's probably the most expensive one out of all these. But yeah, if you leave, leave a comment, let me know if, if you want to know how much you sh generally should be looking for to pay for these. Just let me know. And I will reply. I always reply to comments. And yes, this is the rarest right here. This perfect cell. This is the rarest of this series. Um, I got this from a friend that lives in Japan. That's a seller. Uh, he had it listed for sale. Um, Masano-san, thank you again. And it's really hard to find this, especially complete, because his wings are just this flimsy, thin vinyl. Uh, kind of like the same, but but it's got kind of a leathery texture to it. But it's like, it feels, it's similar to like what they would use for the capes for the vintage Star Wars toys. But yeah, it's got that leathery uh, texture, which is interesting. It's just held on by these pegs. So if those rip off, you know. Um, I will say that this this is this is pushing the $100 mark just for this little mini thing. So yeah, a complete set of these, like these guys, uh, these aren't too, these aren't too expensive. But yeah, once you get sell in the mix, if you want the whole set, they do get quite pricey. Uh, all right, so I've got one more uh, soft final toy to talk about. Official, that is uh, the rarest, I believe, in uh, this this little collection, or the most expensive at least. And that is this guy right here. Um, that I'm hold on, I'm taking a look at his back. This was produced by Bandai, uh, and I believe this was sold around ninety one or two. And it is this kind of jumbo size Super Saiyan Goku. And this was, bring it closer to the camera here. This was a figure, I believe, if you collected enough uh, points or something from the Keshi pur purchases or proof of purchases, you could enter in to win this or buy this separately if you had enough pr proofs of purchases. Um, that's what I gather from what I've seen of, uh, like, because would, you would see this advertised on, like, the Keshi figures, uh, little, little, um, uh, paperwork that come with them. Um, once, once I actually sit down and do the proper research again, after, because it's been a while since I've really thought about these figures, um, maybe I'll do a proper review. And I'll, I, I do have the paperwork and stuff. I just didn't want to make this video more than twenty minutes long. Um, but yeah, it's a really cool figure. And if I put it next to, for example, this other Super Saiyan Goku, uh, yeah, it's huge, much bigger, and uh, also the hair. Is it, is, it's still kind of a golden color, but it's more of a yellowish gold, where this is more of a shiny gold. Um, they also did an unpainted version that looks like a prototype. I've seen some people uh, share those on... Um, I was it uh, DB Fan Hito? I, I'm, if you're watching this, I know you did a really cool video about this in the unpainted version, I believe. I believe that was your channel. So, yeah, you can leave some comments below if, uh, if you know more about this than I do, because uh, I collect so many different kinds of things that I often get uh, too much in my head, and it doesn't all fit. Uh, let's see it next to the Super Collection. By the way, this was sold in a box, like a big box. And uh, yeah, I do see these pop up uh, boxed. Uh, you're going to be paying several hundred dollars for these. Uh, maybe up to $500. Which in modern day soft would be, that's not like unexpected. Soft vinyl toys have gotten really expensive recently. But you could probably find one of these loose. Um... 
for maybe 200 bucks and uh, yeah or if uh if you're lucky like goshen you could win one for free <laughs> you're lucky you lucky jerk goshen yeah look at those nipples look at those nipples does he have nipples on this one yeah they he does they're not as defined yeah those are some those are some pretty sexy goku nipples all right, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at that on the note nipple note. Uh, we just hit 20 minute mark, and I've got to go back to work. Actually, I've got to go to the post office to ship a bunch of toys because I sold so many toys over the holiday. I've got so many boxes to ship. So yeah, let me know if you're interested in any of the, any of these figures. Any more information, prices. Uh, if you want me to help you find some here in Japan, let me know. Uh, just don't ask me anything about Funko Pops because I don't give a damn. That's it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like. Make sure you leave a comment if you can. Feel free to ask me any questions. Check out my Instagram. That's where I put a lot of stuff up for sale. And if you are a collector of vintage Dragon Ball stuff, make sure that you join the Facebook group that I started a couple years ago, uh, Dragon Ball Vintage Collectors. We have over a thousand members and it's a really awesome place to share, uh, learn, trade, buy, sell, and all that jazz. I will link that also down below. And in the meantime, please check out one of these other videos that are Dragon Ball related. Bye-bye! Goku nipples.